never would you have imagined that you would be building a working centrifuge even before starting high school, but that is exactly what you have achieved. Even though this centrifuge cannot be used on a commercial scale, it gives you a glimpse of the heights the simple device can reach. Now that we made this fun device, we can delve a bit further into understanding the principles and concepts behind it, and then we can study its uses and applications in the real world. Apart from a capillary tube, all the other materials you need to make this wonderful device can be easily procured at home. We will provide you with capillary tubes so that you can experiment with different variations and understand the concepts behind this device completely. Up until now, centrifuge was probably a word you may have come across in your textbooks momentarily, but were you able to understand how such a simple mechanism of spinning could cause mind-blowing results? A centrifuge is a device that can spin rapidly, causing a mixture to separate into its components. It is commonly used in labs to separate blood into its components, for example. It can be intimidating to study the concept behind a machine used by renowned scientists from all over the world to study such complex matters. But what if you found out that the centrifuge uses the same concept that your everyday washing machine does? We all know that you must add detergent, water and clothes to a washing machine and voila, 45 minutes later you have clean clothes and most of the water is gone. Where does all the water go? The washing machine spins in a fast circular fashion, causing the light droplets of water to get flung out from the clothes and to the sides of the washing machine where they get sucked in. Why do the particles get flung? Every particle possesses something known as inertia. This is a property of matter by which it continues in its existing state of rest or uniform motion in a straight line unless an ex external force changes that state. Remember Newton's first law? So when the washing machine starts rotating, the water droplets want to remain in their original straight path unless an external force changes that state. And because of this, they get flung in that direction while the machine continues on its circular path. The clothes in the washing machine are forced in a circular path, but the water is not and it flies off tangentially. Centrifugation is a process where a mixture is separated through spinning, more precisely through the centrifugal force that particles experience due to inertia. Any object moving in a circle at a steady angular velocity is subject to an outward directed force known as centrifugal force. Centrifugal force is what was acting upon the water droplets earlier, due to which they remain in the same straight path and get flung away from the clothes. The magnitude of this force depends on the angular velocity in radians per second, denoted by the Greek letter omega, and the radius of rotation r. Depending on the rotational speed and distance from the axis of rotation, the centrifugal force can be many times greater than the force of gravity, allowing even very small particles or particles slightly denser than the fluid to settle. So centrifugal force is nothing but the mass multiplied by the omega squared the angular velocity squared multiplied by the radius. Now if we apply all the concepts we just learned to the simple capillary centrifuge that we built, we can understand how the mud was getting separated from the water and thus purifying the water. Our capillary tube initially contains mud water. This is made up of two types of particles, dirt particles and water droplets. So when the capillary tube is attached to the centrifuge and we start spinning it, both the dirt and water particles are experiencing the same angular velocity and are equidistant from the center. The only difference is the mass due to the difference in the densities. The dirt particles having a higher density will automatically experience a bigger centrifugal force compared to the water droplets and thus will get flung farther away. And the water droplets that are experiencing a smaller force will get flung only a little distance away and will remain nearer the center. Eventually, after some spinning, all the dirt particles would have gotten displaced to the end of the tube, farthest away from the center, and the water particles will remain on top. The particles at the end of the tube form what is known as a pellet, and the remaining solution is known as the supernatant. Some variations you can try. You should try to make models with varying radius, one bigger than your original and one smaller. According to theory, the one with the bigger radius should have a bigger centrifugal force, and so the mixture would separate faster. 
try performing the same mud water experiment with the radius variation model. Another thing you should experiment with is the angular speed. Try to come up with a model that spins faster than the original. Let us know what you come up with. You can also try different experiments. For example, try it with milk. Instead of using mud water in the capillary, this time use a little milk. You have already understood the concepts behind a centrifuge with the help of mud water. Now you can try separating milk as they do in commercial factories using your own little centrifuge. Record how long it takes to separate it. If it takes longer, why? Do you think that the angular velocity we were using for mud water will be sufficient to separate milk? What will be the pellet and what will be the supernatant in this case? This experiment will help you understand the different types of milks you find in the market. What about blood? One of the main uses of a centrifuge is to separate the components of blood. This is something you may not be able to do at home, unless you are not at all squeamish about it. But you should definitely put your energy into researching about what labs use centrifuges for, why they centrifuge blood, which layer do they need, etc. How does this help patients? Next time you go to the doctors for a blood test, ask her or him to give you some in a small vial which you can then test in your centrifuge. What you can learn here is about the components of blood. Blood is approximately made up of 50% plasma and 50% blood cells. The blood cells are made up of red blood cells, white blood cells and platelets. In the plasma, around 93% is just water and the rest is salts and proteins. After centrifuging blood, this is what it looks like. Based on this, could you guess which of the components are heaviest and which the lightest? Some scientific terms. Inertia, a property of matter by which it continues in its existing state of rest or uniform motion in a straight line unless an external force changes that state. Centrifugal force, a force arising from the body's inertia which appears to act on a body moving in a circular path and is directed away from the center around which the body is moving. Plasma. Plasma is the liquid portion of blood, a protein salt solution in which red and white blood cells and platelets are suspended. Pellet. A pellet is a small, compressed, hard chunk of matter that lies at the bottom of the tube after centrifugation. And a supernatant which is the liquid that lies above a sediment or precipitate in the tube after centrifugation. Some applications, separation of cream from milk, separating the different components of blood. Here are some other commercial applications. In the oil industry to remove solids from the drilling fluid. Large industrial centrifuges are commonly used in water and wastewater treatment to dry sludges. Disc stack centrifuges used by some companies in the oil sands industry to separate small amounts of water and solids from bitumen. We hope you enjoyed making this device and have had a fun time experimenting with it and now also have a better understanding of how it works, what inertia and centrifugal force are and the different terminologies used in the process of centrifugation. And most importantly, understand its use and significance in everyday life, which we often don't appreciate enough. Thank you.